The progression of Apollo flights continued with 10, a lunar orbit and rendezvous of Charlie Brown and its lunar module, Snoopy. Crew members Tom Stafford, John Young, and Gene Cernan scouted the moon's sea of tranquility, the region where Apollo 11 was scheduled to land. They also transmitted the first live color pictures back to Earth. Apollo 8 had not carried a lunar module. Apollo 10 could land, but didn't. The LEM containing Cernan and Stafford came within nine miles of the surface. The inevitable question, people say, didn't you want to keep going and didn't you want to land? Well, we knew long before we left that our mission was not to land, and just to make sure we understood that, they uh, only half fueled the ascent tanks. <laughs> so. We did. We made a little pass. We found out we had a, a little miscommunications between the radar and the computer. That might very well have stopped uh, Apollo 11 from landing had it not been found out. And, and we found a few other things. We, we actually separated or staged the vehicles. And uh, when we lift off the surface, you use a descent stage that contains a descent engine as a launch platform. And if you've seen pictures, it just stays on the surface. Well, we did that above the landing site at about 50,000 feet and staged that ascent, fired the ascent engine, and uh, completed the rendezvous just as Apollo 11, Apollo 12, and all the subsequent flights to the moon would have to do. Before the program was over, Cernan and Command Module Pilot John Young would get a second chance to visit the moon. The trial run of Apollo 10 was considered a success. There were a few minor problems, including one during the staging maneuver, when Snoopy's ascent engine was fired prior to docking with Charlie Brown. During Apollo 11, this procedure would be done on the moon, and the descent stage would be left on the surface, not drifting in space. As Snoopy started the maneuver, it suddenly began spinning wildly. Stafford and Cernan regained control in a matter of minutes, and the problem was traced to a switch for the abort guidance system that had been left in the wrong position. These and other problems would be ironed out for the next flight. It could have been anyone, instead of Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins. The crew assignment process had been set up so that any astronaut could fly any mission. Had something gone wrong on the two shakedown cruises flown during the first half of 1969, Apollo 11 would not have reached the moon. It feels good. T minus 25 seconds. 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds, guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9, ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, all engine running. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Four days later, the lunar module Eagle, carrying Armstrong and Aldrin, separated from the command module Columbia and began its journey to the surface. Then we started our, uh, uh, our, our final descent, and I, I think uh, in, in many ways that was the most complex part of uh, the flight from our standpoint. Now, there were other complicated parts of the flight, but they had been demonstrated by other crews on previous flights. We, this was the first time we were getting to some, do something that, that had not been uh, previously tested, and so we, it was the time for us uh, to uh, put our very best efforts into getting a successful conclusion. There were problems crossing those last few miles, however. At various times during the descent, alarms sounded aboard Eagle, signaling a computer overload. Mission Control correctly predicted that the problem did not affect the landing radar and told the astronauts to proceed. Then, at less than 2,000 feet, the two astronauts realized Eagle's autopilot would deposit them in a rock-covered area surrounding a crater. At 300 feet, as Aldrin calmly continued to relay descent information, 
Armstrong took manual control of the lunar module, which had only 30 seconds of fuel remaining. Straight shadow. Four forward, drift into the right a little. 30 seconds. Forward, drift. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. We copy it down, Eagle. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. We were around... Oh, 30, 40 feet, looking, looking for that smoother spot. And then uh, once we started settling on through, even though 30 seconds of fuel remaining had been called out by mission control, uh, I felt quite confident that Neil's expertise would get us on the ground. And sure enough, it did. Six and a half hours later, Armstrong left Eagle. He had prepared a speech only a few hours earlier. Like Armstrong himself, it was brief and concise. I'm going to step off the limb. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. The moon was a world of black and white and gray. The surface was even more compact than had been theorized. It was covered in a fine, powdery soil, much the same consistency as charcoal ash or talcum powder. Armstrong's boots sunk less than an inch into the dust. Oh, that looks beautiful for me, Neil. It has a stark beauty all its own. It's uh, like much of the high desert of uh, the United States. It's uh, different, but it's very pretty out here. A half hour later, Aldrin joined Armstrong. They then spoke to each other almost matter-of-factly, but during the exchange, Aldrin softly summed up his impression of the moon. Isn't that something? Magnificent sight out here. Magnificent desolation. Meanwhile, Mike Collins quietly orbited the moon in the command module. He was the most isolated person in history, but it was a peaceful loneliness. It has been a source of frustration to him that in the years following Apollo 11, he has been constantly asked if he felt cheated, left alone in the command module. You know, I can't tell the truth about that because no one believes me, but I was just very happy to, uh, to be where I was, to have the, uh, the seat that I had. Uh, at that time, I think there were, I don't know, 30-some people in the astronaut office that were all clawing and scratching to get to be on the first crew, I kind of felt, and, uh, and there I was on it, uh, admittedly not with the uh, best seat of the three, but uh, the seat I had... Uh, then and now suited me just fine. On the surface, there was work to do. The astronauts had little more than two hours to complete their tasks, which included deploying several pieces of scientific equipment, erecting an American flag, and collecting 48 and a half pounds of soil and rock. Within the soil was a new mineral, which would gain the official title Armalcolite, the first syllable of each of the three astronauts' last names. Less than 24 hours after landing, the ascent stage of Eagle rose from the moon. Tranquility Base, uh, Houston. Guidance recommendation uh, is pings, and you're cleared for takeoff. Roger, understand. We're number one on the runway. 